Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to AC electrical signal routing with a triac and an optocoupler circuit. And this is part two in my solid state switching series, which will be four parts. And this one, of course, we're focusing on a triac, which is a semiconductor device that can be used as a switch to control AC line power. Please check me out on Patreon where you can find exclusive Forstronics content, including content from this video series that I just posted. If you like what you see here and you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up for this video. All right, let's get started. Okay, in this video series in part one, I covered N and P channel MOSFETs and I also discussed the pros and cons of solid state switches versus mechanical relays. I recently did a video series on mechanical relays, so please check that out. Part one's getting a great response, so I'm hoping to get a good response for part two where we'll cover what a triac is, its theory of operation, and how to create an isolated circuit to control a triac like a switch to switch on and off AC line power. And we need an isolated circuit because we don't want to mix our low power DC circuit with our AC line. So that's why I say isolated. Before I get started, I'll just point you to the latest Patreon content, exclusive Forstronic Patreon content, which is the Forstronics wireless switch design. So this relates to both this solid state switching series and the mechanical relay switching series. But this is a board with an ESP32. It has mechanical relays, it has solid state relays, it has a triac on it, so you can use it to switch DC and AC. And since it has an ESP32, you can control it wirelessly. I have a video on Patreon to give an overview of this design, plus all the design files, all the schematics, and also some example code on using Arduino IoT Cloud to control this board. So please check that out on Patreon. Okay, triacs come from the thyristor family. And the main thyristor out there is the silicone controlled rectifier or SCR. And I'm showing an SCR off to the right, the schematic symbol. And all an SCR is, is essentially a solid state switch. So it fits well into this series, but it's a diode that you can turn on and off. So it has an anode and a cathode, just like a diode, and it allows current to flow in one direction, just like a diode. But unlike a diode, the gate turns it on and off. So if there's no proper signal applied to the gate, it acts like an open switch. If there is a signal applied to the gate, then you could have a positive voltage causing current flow from the anode to the cathode. So it's similar to a MOSFET that we talked about in the last series, but it can't amplify signals like a MOSFET can. Also, SCRs are typically targeted at higher power applications. And in lower applications, you don't see them too often and people just typically use MOSFETs. So that's why I didn't choose to cover them in detail for this series, but I wanted to give you that background on SCRs because to build a triac, you essentially use two SCRs in parallel in opposite directions. So a triac is an acronym and this triac stands for triode AC switch. And if you look at the schematic symbol to the right, it's essentially two SCRs in parallel, but the, S, the diode that makes up the SCRs is facing different directions. That way, if it's properly biased, you can actually get current flowing in both directions. So just like the SCR, it has a gate, it has three pins. And notice it doesn't label them anode and cathode, right? Because the diodes are facing in opposite directions. So by properly biasing the gate, you can actually get current flowing in both directions. Now, if you want to learn more about SCRs and tracks, there's a great website out there, Electronics Tutorials, and I'll provide a link to that in the video description. Okay, so here's a simple circuit with a triac configured as a switch to control current flowing to a load, and I'm labeling this as an AC load. So let's pretend our AC source is AC line power, whether it's 60 hertz or 50 hertz. But to turn on the triax so it acts like a closed switch, I need to provide the proper gate bias. But the gate bias changes whether the voltage is positive or negative. So for instance, if I provided a positive gate bias based on the triax data sheet and I turned on my AC source, I would only get a half cycle of the AC voltage, the positive half cycle. The negative part of the, the source would be blocked. It would act like an open switch. So in that case, you're only getting current flowing in one direction. In turn, if I applied a negative voltage to the gate, I would only get the negative part of the AC waveform to pass. When I say pass, it would act like a closed switch, and it would act like an open switch to the positive part. 
that's not too helpful if I'm only, unless I'm trying to use it as a rectifier, that's not too helpful for a design where you're trying to switch on and off an AC source. To switch the full waveform of the AC signal, we actually have to have a gate waveform that goes positive and negative based on the data sheet of the triac, and it has to be in phase with our AC source signal to turn it on and off, I shouldn't say off, to turn it on positive and turn it on negative at the right times or else we will not get the full AC waveform and current flowing in two directions. So if you think about that, that problem I just said, that's hard to overcome with just a microcontroller. We could always create a positive and negative going square wave with a microcontroller, but we have to make sure it's in phase with the AC signal, which can be tricky. Another thing you could think of though is, what if you used a resistor divider network to reduce the voltage of the AC waveform, but have the whole AC waveform and connect it to the gate and to the low side? In that case, you use the AC source waveform to bias the gate properly to allow the full, the main power AC waveform to flow in this circuit. I hope that makes sense. But that's one way to create a gate signal that will turn the triac on positive and on negative at the right time to pass the full AC waveform. So that brings us into our optocoupler driver, the MOC3041. And there's a whole series of these and they're opto isolators that are specially designed to control triacs. And this one's the 3041, I think they have a 3042. The one I have is for surface mount applications, but you can also get through hole. You can also find through hole triacs. So if you wanted to mock up a circuit on a breadboard, you could. But the way this works is first of all, it's an isolator. So what does that mean? An opto isolator, opto coupler. Is it means it isolates two circuits from each other, but allows one circuit to control the other. So notice we have this diode LED with an anode and a cathode. So this is where we'd connect our DC control circuitry. We'd send current through this LED and the light from this LED inside the IC turns on the other section of the IC without having to have an electrical connection. So that's how they're referred to as an opto coupler because they allow you to do circuit control with no connection. And that's good for this application because we don't want to mix our AC signals with our low power DC. The other part of this though is we have this zero crossing circuit. So our triac circuit's gonna connect to pin six and pin four. And I'll show you exactly how to configure that on the next slide. But the idea is it samples that AC waveform, our AC line power waveform, and uses that to drive the gate for the triac. So the triac is on for both the positive and negative going waveforms. So that solves that issue. And so we have two ways this circuit works. First of all, with the LED has to be on. If the LED is not on, the triac will, will, the gate of the triac will not be driven. If the LED is on, then this zero crossing circuit is effective and we get a signal from our, a small signal that we leverage from our main AC signal to basically control our triac so it can act like a closed switch and pass the AC waveform. Okay, here's a screenshot from my EcoCAD software showing a circuit that's implementing the triac along with the MOC3041. So this is the IC we were just looking at in the, the previous slide. So notice this is the DC side. We have the anode and the cathode. And so I have 3.3 volts. I have a 300 ohm resistor that's, that sets the current that's gonna flow through here. And then I have an end channel MOSFET to control and turn that current on and off. And you should know how this works, right? If you watched part one of the video series. This triac label is because it connects to a pin on my ESP32 or any microcontroller could be that turns this end channel MOSFET on or off or closed or open. So when a logic high is applied here, this acts like a short, we get current flowing through the internal LED that turns it on to ground. If this is low, this acts like an open and there's no current flowing through that LED so it does not light up. Now on the other side, this is where we have our triac that we're controlling and driving. So over here we have the hot signal in and this, when this is closed, then that signal flows to here. If it's open, of course we get no current flow. Now R9 and R10, you might be saying, oh, that's, you know, that's sort of the divider network you were talking about. Yeah, that is. And where did I get these resistor values? The data sheet of the MOC3041 told me to use these values. 
So this circuit was pretty easy to implement because the data sheet for this IC told me a lot of what to use. So notice here, this is pin six. This is where our AC signal gets sampled to help drive the gate so that the full AC waveform can pass through when the triac is closed. The optocoupler recommended this resistor and capacitor if you're working with AC loads that are highly inductive. And the idea is this is probably helping keeping current and voltage in phase. But once again, I didn't calculate these values. The data sheet for the opto isolator did. And my implementation is for more of uh, AC power line signals that are 110 and 120. But the data sheet also provides guidance if you're working with 240 volts, if you're in one of those countries in that part of the world. If you're working with 240 volts AC applications, then you would change R9 to 360 and R10 to 330. So let's look at a demo of our triac circuit in action. Okay, here I have a video and what I'm showing is a board that implements that exact triac circuit I just showed you. In fact, this is the Forstronics wireless switch design that you can find on Patreon if you're interested in more information. So here, this black semiconductor is our triac. This white package is the optocoupler. And you can see the N-channel MOSFETs right here. Here's some of our resistors for controlling the current flow through the internal LED. Then we have R9 and R10, which we just showed for properly biasing the triac. And you can see the gate control line right here. And what you're seeing in this wiring is I have the hot line of a AC light that has an Edison light bulb connected to the hot in and then hot out of the triac. And then this other line is the neutral line of the AC circuit. So if I turn this on, we're gonna zoom out. And uh, for Patreon purposes, I have a fan also on the DC side, but we won't look at that in this video. Here's the light. So right now the light is on with an Edison light bulb and I have configured an Arduino IoT dashboard. So this is our Arduino's cloud control platform with code to control the different switches on the board. And one of them, the AC light control, is controlling the triac. So when I have it on, it tells my ESP32 pin to be high, which sends current through the LED, which closes our triac switch. When I turn this off, then there's no, gonna be no current flowing through the LED in the optocoupler that will turn the triac off or make it act like an open. So right now we saw the lights on. If I turn off the switch, we look up, oh, the light's off, right? So our triac there, I turned it back on. And there we go. And so then I'm gonna turn it off again. And there it is, it's off. Real easy to control, real easy circuit to implement to control AC lighting. And if you wanna see the rest of this demo and the code, you can access it on Patreon. Okay, that's it for AC electrical signal routing with a triac and an optocoupler circuit. Please come back for part three where we'll talk about using solid state relays and what they are and how to implement them. If you have any questions from this video, please use the comments section. And if you think I missed anything, please use the comments section as well. If you're interested in the exclusive content, please check it out on Patreon. Thank you for watching.